Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I've got a couple of portraits of all things to uh, kind of uh, have a go at. And, uh, you know, I always encourage experimentation and kind of trying to learn and stretch yourself. And so I'm not much of a portrait person, uh, as you may know if you've been here before. However, there are events from time to time where people show up that want to get some model shots taken. And then there's photographers like myself that show up that want to practice taking portraits. I went to one of those back in July, took a number of portraits that evening. I thought I'd walk through and edit a couple of those here in Luminar AI, uh, partly because it's good practice for me and also partly because the tools in Luminar AI to edit portraits are just so dang good. I, I really like it. And even though it's not a genre of photography that I do a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's spurred an interest in me to, uh, to pursue that further. So here's the first one. And I don't really have a plan with either one of these photos. I do have two. I'm just kind of going to hack my way around. I mean, I've pl played around with them a little bit, but I don't have notes. I don't have a plan. I don't have a like, I got to do this and got to do that. In other words, I don't have a script. I don't have uh, steps that I'm taking specifically on either of these photos. I'm just kind of walking uh, through and kind of editing on the fly. Um, so I've done some basic stuff in light, primarily just lifted the exposure. Um, this is Again, not being a portrait person, I was shooting with an 85 1.8, 85 millimeter prime at 1.8 with uh, elevated ISO. So, um, you know, and I shoot in aperture priority mode. So, you know, depending on the light and the movement and all that, I was moving around trying to get stuff. A lot of them were really dark. It's okay with me. I tend to shoot darker anyway. I kind of expose to the left. But uh, here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of portrait bokeh AI. And when you hover over it, you can see that it picks up the, uh, you know, it kind of shows you what. Uh, what the mask is, for lack of a better word. It's not perfect. You know, there's some spots that need to be fixed, like around the side of her hair here and between her arm and her torso. I'm not going to do that. You can do that for purposes of brevity. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I like that tool quite a bit. I also like face light a whole lot. I mean, it just does a fantastic job, as you can see. I'm going to be careful. I don't want to overdo it. And I don't think I'm going to mess with any of these things, like eyes or mouth. I do think I will go to Skin AI, and I'm going to... Uh, Add a little bit of that and a little bit of shine removal. And now that I've done that, I think I'm going to go back here and elevate the uh, face light amount. So something about like that. Um, yeah, so one thing I don't like is the, the background a whole lot. And I'm not going to swap that out. Although in Luminar Neo, if you've seen their videos, that they're going to have background replacement for portraits. So I'm pretty excited about that. That seems pretty cool. I'm going to add some mystical. And if you see what that does, it really just kind of accentuates the difference, uh, you know, it creates contrast. So it makes the background darker and the foreground lighter in this case. So if I go like that, you know, you're getting, um, well, too much uh, of it, but you can see that it's kind of darkening the background. So I'm going to add just a little bit. It also seems to soften the image, which I kind of like. So I I'm doing that. And I think, um, you know what, it probably needs denoise. I'm not going to mess with that, but you do have that here. Uh, but if it was really high noise, I would probably go to a noise removal tool that's very specific. Just depends. I mean, I use it in Luminar sometimes, and sometimes I go to other tools. Um, I'm going to get a vignette. I like vignettes on a lot of my photos. Uh, I definitely like them on portraits. So I'm going to do something about like that. For subject, I usually never choose right on the face. For me, uh, when you're shooting in portrait mode, it puts the vignette too high in the photo. So I'm going to go like like around her neck or her upper uh, like you know chest area, and there you go. So something about like that. Let me see how much. Maybe maybe about that much. So. I think that's my edit. I, I don't know for sure. Again, not scripted. I'm going to do two, so I don't want to make a 30-minute video where you watch me kind of stumble around in the dark. But there's the before, and there's the after. I kind of like that. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to call that an edit, although actually, you know what? I'm not. Uh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to get a little bit less, uh, a little bit more coolness. Uh, I'm going to decrease the temperature, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I just kind of like that. Um, and anytime you have light on a subject, I always feel like it's kind of warm. So I tend to do temperature a lot anyway, even on portraits. The thing to be careful about is her dress is white. And so you might want to be careful that you don't go too blue because it will start to make that dress really blue. In which case you could come back in here and lift the highlights. If you lift them much, you'll see it starts to really blow out some of those brighter areas. So maybe just a little bit. Again, season to taste, just kind of play around. I think that's my first edit. I'm happy with that. If you compare it to the before and after, I mean, it's quite a difference. It's obviously brighter. I think we centered the light on her a lot better, brightened her face, that kind of thing. So I'm going to call that an edit. Let me go get photograph number two. Okay, and here's this one. Very dark. We're going to fix that, of course, by starting with the light tool. I'm going to bump that exposure quite a bit. I need to go kind of high. So maybe, maybe something about like that. 
Uh, I think I'll pull the highlights down. Yeah, um, so this was at the same place. The first shot was inside with lights. This was a little bit of light, but also outside. There's like a rooftop deck. It's a cool area downtown. Um, I think um, uh, I'm going to actually add some warmth. It was sunset. I want to kind of bring up some of that feeling in the photo. It is crooked. That's no surprise because I was shooting it and uh, I swear, I think I, you know, I just need to go see a chiropractor every day because uh, my photos are frequently crooked. That looks better. I'm going with this, um, these buildings in the background, even though they're blurred out again, 85 millimeter, 1.8 shooting at 1.8. But, um, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to do a tiny bit of portrait bokeh AI just because it's wicked cool. And I just think that's so fun. Uh, and once again, as you hover, you can see it picks up the model. And honestly, that's a really fantastic job. Even the earring hanging off her right ear, the, the curve of her cowboy or cowgirl hat uh, on that uh, our left side, like her right side. The only thing it kind of missed is a little bit of this rail is included uh, and a little bit of that rail is included. But again, I'm not going to fix that. You wouldn't even be able to tell if I did. It would have like literally no impact on the photo. So I'm cool with that. Face for sure. I definitely need to light that up. Uh, so I'm going to do something about like that. I want to be careful. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. I'm noticing a spot on her lip. Okay, it looks like some kind of reflection or something. So you can take that kind of stuff out with the eraser. I'm not going to bother in this video. I am aware of that. I thought it was a spot. Uh, of some sort on the uh, either on my monitor or whatever but anyway uh, you can take that out in the um, with the erase tool again I'm gonna skip it skin AI I might do a tiny bit of that and a little bit of shine removal as well just to kind of see uh, you know sometimes like when I brighten the face I feel like it, it accentuates the shine because the bright stuff gets brighter of course and so I tend to kind of bounce back and forth between those I think that looks pretty good uh, I actually might brighten her face a little bit more. Let me just try that. I'm already at 52. I mean, I don't want to overdo it. You don't want to like blow it out, but you know, maybe mid fifties. I think that looks pretty reasonable there and it looks more balanced, which I like. So I'm going to try, um, I think I'm going to try uh, super contrast, not something I really normally would do necessarily on a portrait, but what I want to do is kind of uh, draw a little bit more attention to her, which to me is like darkening the background kind of. So the way I often start with super contrast is I just click all three of them to kind of like a mid thirties kind of range. And then I start playing around with the balance. So highlights balance definitely to the right is better because to the left it's blowing those out. So I'm going to do that mid tone balance. Uh, yeah, that's uh, actually, you know, I think I'm going to leave that right about in the middle. Let's try shadows. Well, I kind of like that. Um, if I go left, it's flatter, right? But if I go to the right, it's higher contrast. I like that. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. I think that looks good. So uh, what else could I do? I'm going to try a little bit of mystical like I did on the first portrait. Yeah, I, I don't really like it here. I liked it with the light on the inside when it was a little bit darker and moodier light. But in this light, I don't really like it. It's adding too much shadow. It, it's just not really working for me. I do want to do a little bit with color. I'm just going to play with color harmony. Uh, I'm going to get down here to color balance. And I think in the shadows, I'm going to go a little bit bluer. Yeah, I like that. And let's try mid-tones, which is going to be maybe her. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of yellow there. How about a little magenta? Yeah, see, I don't like the green, but I like the magenta quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go really gentle. I'm going to be careful not to kind of oversaturate her. Uh, let me see what that's done. There's before and after. I kind of like those color tone changes. However, I think it's a little too saturated. So I'm going to pull down saturation and vibrance a little bit. Maybe not that much. Um, I, I like saturation and vibrance. You got to be careful though. She's got like some warm light on her face. She looks like she's kind of tan. So it's going to bring up a whole lot of kind of that warmth in her face. You don't want to oversaturate it and make it look kind of cartoonish. So I think settling that down a little bit uh, helps. And then, you know, a vignette. I think that's probably going to be my final move here. Once again, inner light. And once again, choose subject. I generally go kind of, like I said, upper chest or kind of neck area. On portraits, I don't really ever want it right on their face, uh, partly because I just don't like it there. But also, as I said in the last one, it throws the you know the majority of what you're brightening with inner light high into the photo, of course. So I'm trying to go kind of middle while still getting a lot of it in her face. Uh, so you know that area. So something about like that, and I might go back and just try highlights one more time, see if there's anything else to pull out of those. You know, a tiny bit of it. You don't really even notice it. I actually think I'm going to go back to vignette and just try a little bit more inner light. 
something about like that. I think that looks good. Um, I'm going to call that an edit. I think that's it. So let me show you the before and after. So the before, I mean, like the sky was okay, obviously way underexposed. We were shooting fast. There was obviously no light on her. I think there were lights later, but at this time of day, I guess we, we were there for a number of hours. I guess uh, there was no light on her, or at least I can't detect it in this file, but uh, very dark, definitely a lot brighter. Uh, you know, obviously the portrait, uh, you know, the focus is the subject, which is the person. So I think the light, you know, rearrangement we've done, which has been the brightening uh, of the exposure in light, but also I think super contrast helped a little bit. Let me turn that off and do a compare. Um, yeah, there it is before super contrast and after. I think that's nice. It does, that contrast does make the colors pop. So if for some reason, something like this that has a bit of a tan, if you need to come into HSL, go into saturation and put on that orange and that ought to help. Like if you go really low, yeah, it's gonna wipe her out and make her look terrible. But maybe taking that down by you know 15 or so, I think that actually looks pretty good and it doesn't lose the color in her skin or her shirt but it reduces that intensity a little bit so it's a good way to isolate that color there's two portrait edits which you don't really see me do but i do like the portrait tools in luminar ai i'm going to go to more events take more portraits and just kind of have fun and experiment with them and try to get better because i always encourage experimentation and that sort of thing uh, for you guys and so hey i'm trying to do that myself hope these unscripted edits are fun and helpful and all that kind of stuff if you haven't used the portrait tools very much in Luminar AI, I definitely encourage that. And I anticipate these tools coming over to Luminar Neo as well. As soon as I find out more, you know, I'll be sharing it right here. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and adios.